Modular synthesis seems scary when you first get into it, believe me, I know. But man, when you get it and it finally all clicks, wow, does it make for some extreme levels of creativity, flexibility, and awesomeness. You gain this greater understanding of how synthesis works, and you can create your own synths by connecting blocks together. And you have a lot of fun along the way as well. The problem is, it's so expensive, right? The modules, the cases, the cables, the power supplies, the crippling debt and anxiety that goes along with it. No. Absolutely not. Sure, if you want to get into hardware synthesis like Eurorack or something like that, then you're in for a very expensive journey. But you can download Reactor Blocks for free and get started without paying a single cent. Let me show you how and to get your very first sound out of a modular setup. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Today, I wanna to show you just how easy it is to get into modular synthesis with something like reactor blocks. By the end of this quick video, you will have made your very first sound in a modular synth setup. And if you love it and you wanna know more, I have just released a full length course with Groove 3 on modular synthesis. It'll take you through so many more techniques and blocks that you can explore and it can all still be done with reactor blocks. And it's gonna keep pushing you towards that synth nerd status. I'll share more on the course later, but there are some links below if you're interested. But right now, let's get stuck into the basics first. Before we get started, let's talk about some basic fundamentals for synthesis, just so we're all on the same page. Most forms of synthesis, including modular setups, are basically based around subtractive synthesis. This is the idea that you start with a really harmonically rich waveform, like a saw wave or something like that, and you sculpt out the frequencies you don't want to leave you with the sound that you want, i.e. subtracting stuff to leave you with the sound that you desire. The only thing that really changes with modular setups is that you have to patch the synth yourself. But that means that you get to put what you want together in really creative ways. Check out this signal flow diagram. This is the basic layout for an audio signal flow in a subtractive synthesizer. Remember, of course, that synthesizers are making a sound, so that's the oscillator there at the front doing that job. It often then goes into a filter to do the subtractive part, so it subtracts some of that sound. It's then going into an amplifier to turn up and down the sound to make notes, and in order to control that note, it's using an envelope. That listens out to when you press the MIDI keyboard and when you release it to make sure that it shapes the VCA or the amplifier to make it actually play a note. We're going to recreate that signal flow, all of it, in Reactor Blocks. And you can get that for free through Native Instruments. If you download their complete start bundle, it'll actually provide you Reactor 6 Player and the free Blocks base. And that will be everything that you need to get started. Just sign up to a free account, claim the code, and download it through Native Access, and you are good to go. So let's dive in and patch this synth together. When you open up Reactor or Reactor Player for the first time, you're gonna have these three options and we're gonna wanna click Patch. In here, you'll have access to the Blocks Base and you'll have the Bento Box and the Utility. Both of these will be very useful, but we're gonna stick mostly to the Bento Box at the moment. Now, our first thing is the Oscillator. We need to generate a sound, so we're gonna need to drop that one in there. While we're here, let's drop all the blocks that we need and then we'll connect all the wires. So we're gonna need a filter, let's drop that in there. We're also gonna need a VCA. And we're also gonna need an envelope. I'm gonna drop that one below and just open up this screen a little bit more so we can see it. You can see that it's very drag and drop friendly inside Reactor with the blocks. And that's a great way to learn. You can drag and move these all around. You can rename them. You'll even be able to color code wires and all that sort of fun stuff. Speaking of wires, let's connect some up. So first of all, we need to connect our audio through. Our audio has to go through something. We have an audio in and an out. We won't really be needing the audio in, of course, because our oscillator is going to make a sound. This is where it starts. Now I just need to connect it from out to in by clicking and dragging and creating that wire connection. And I'll do it here as well, so it's going to be flowing from oscillator through the filter, through the VCA, and then I'm going to connect it to both left and right outputs on the output block. Right now, though, if I turn this up, you're probably not going to hear anything. One of two things may have happened. Either you heard absolutely nothing or you heard the lowest frequency your speakers could possibly make. It depends on the type of studio you are in at the moment, of course, because it depends on the speakers that you're using. You likely heard nothing though. This is because the oscillator is just oscillating whatever lowest random pitch it has. We need to feed the pitch from our keyboard. So we do this through our note in block. Our note in block is basically everything coming from our MIDI keyboard and we wanna connect to this pitch here. So if I just connect the two pitches together, then that means if I press a key, let's say middle C on the keyboard, and then I turn up my VCA, we should hear a sound. 
Very simple, easy sound. We can, of course, change the wave shape as well. Down here, if you click and drag this, it'll go through triangle, through saw wave, and even pulse wave. So find something that you like. Then, of course, we can connect our envelope. That's going to be a very important part of the puzzle here because we're feeding pitch already, but we also need to feed it when the note is on or off from our MIDI keyboard. The way that we do this is through a gate. The gate is basically the on and off. When you hold the note down, the gate is open and allowing the signal through. When you let go of that key, it is closing the gate and not letting it through. On the note in block, we have a gate as well. So we're going to connect that to our envelope down here. And I'm gonna connect the output here to a different spot. I'm gonna put it on my A port on my VCA. That's because the envelope is gonna be controlling the VCA and the A and the B ports are basically modulator ports. This block is modulating something else. It's not actually passing any audio through it. So I'm connecting it to the A port which makes it nice and easy to then tailor to your needs. On here, if I look at this light that's on the A, every time I press a key on the keyboard, it should light up. That means it's receiving a signal from the gate, passing through the envelope and being attached to that port on the VCA. I just need to now tell it, what do I want to control? If I click on that A, then it gives me a slider option next to my level knob. And if I increase that right to the top, it means that this is going to be affected by the envelope. Essentially, it means that knob is going to open all the way up and follow the envelope's curve, the attack, the decay, the sustain and the release. But it's not exactly terribly interesting at the moment, is it? I mean, I think I need to take some of that harshness away. That's where our filter comes in. At the moment, it's in low pass mode, but filters can be in low pass, high pass, or band pass. But let's leave it in low pass for now. If I hold down a note, I'm gonna basically move this knob down, which is gonna reduce the cutoff and reduce the amount of frequencies let through in the top end. There we go, we've taken away some of the buzziness. Now it is still pretty basic from here, and of course my course goes way into showing you how to do a lot more complex things. But if we just add a few effects here in our door, this can get really exciting quickly. If I jump over to my audio effects, let's add in some distortion. There's a nice one from a Chira called Cold Fire. Let's check out that. Let's pick a preset, Acid Synth. Sounding a little more interesting. Let's add a few more things. Let's add a chorus. There's a nice one from Sound Toys here, Micro Shift. It's sounding good, but now I think it needs a bit more space. Let's add in a delay. I quite like Replica from Native Instruments for this job. And let's try putting it into a ping pong mode and maybe something like the tape delay. And finally, a little bit of reverb. Another one from Native Instruments, Rawm. It's quite nice. So with a few very simple effects, you can really dress this up into something quite usable. So what we've seen here today just scratches the surface of what is possible with this type of thing, with modular synthesis. And learning the other blocks and what they can do and how you can connect them would be amazing to just explode creatively what you can do. It'll really push things to the next level and unlock your sort of potential as a sound designer. If you want to do that, you can check out my new Groove 3 course. It's learning modular synthesis through reactor blocks, which is just using the free reactor blocks to learn even more principles with all those extra bento box and utility blocks as well. While it takes you right from the beginning and recaps in more detail some of the stuff we've seen today, it will really push your potential a lot more forward and allow you to do some really creative and exceptional things. It's going to upgrade your skills as a sound designer, and I think it will be really, really cool to see what you could create with it. So if you're interested, check the description below and you'll be able to get a link to that course. It's available as an outright purchase or, of course, you can subscribe to Groove 3 and get all of their amazing courses with that subscription. Of course, if you've enjoyed the tips from today and you would like some more for free from me, then of course, subscribe to this channel. But otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>